We've been hearing a lot about anti-vaxxers in the news lately, but they've been around since the beginning of vaccines. Vaccines date back to the research of Edward Jenner, a doctor who was working in rural Britain in the 1700s. He noticed that on the farm, the milkmaids didn't get smallpox in the way everyone else around him seemed to. So, one by one, he started scraping pus from sick cows into the skin of his family members, and miraculously, they didn't get sick. His discovery led to the smallpox vaccine and later the world's first and only infectious disease eradication. This child has what we call active immunity. He has acquired this active immunity by actually having the disease. Fortunately, there is a safer way to get immunity. This is through vaccination. Edward Jenner was basically ostracized from his community. People thought it was disgusting that he would inject his family with pathogens from a sick animal. Fast forward to today and the same kinds of concerns continue. We do not need that many vaccines. People overly generalize about them as if they're only great. Doctors have to ask brand new parents to give otherwise healthy babies dozens of needles based on the promise that they'll avoid some future abstract disease. One discredited paper made many, many parents think that there was a link between the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine and autism. The parents understand it, they get it, because they've lived it. The message from the BMJ could not be clearer or more shocking. Wakesfield research, they contend, has been a fraud. And we have other anti-vaxxers today who aren't only worried about autism. There are the delayers like Rand Paul. We sometimes give five and six vaccines all at one time. I chose to have mine delayed. There are deniers of all stripes. They're the Orthodox Jews in Brooklyn. They're the parents of children with medical conditions who have to opt out. They're even unvaccinated kids visiting Disneyland. The majority of last year's massive uptick in measles cases actually involved the Amish of Ohio. More than 350 people there were infected by one man who had traveled to the Philippines. These outbreaks of vaccine-preventable diseases in the U.S typically happen just like that. An unimmunized person travels to a place where one of these diseases is circulating and then returns to a community with other similarly unimmunized people. And boom, we don't remember what measles or polio or hepatitis B look like and felt like. These vaccines work so well that the memory of these diseases has faded. Viruses and bacteria don't know any borders. All it takes is a single traveler to spark an outbreak even in the happiest place on earth. 